yeah, it's wild. But I am through it. I am through it. And, uh, you know, I got asked to do a podcast every week last year and I didn't do any. And this is the first time now, like, the film's coming out and I just need to draw a line under it. Would you want to do your own intro? Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm wrong. There's not on that. There's not on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Rob Warner. I'm Rob. <laughs> oh, my arms don't work. <laughs> Powerful. Powerful. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, dog. Thanks right. for having me. Straight out the desert. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Straight out the desert. Yeah, I got back from Saudi the day before yesterday. So that was... Yeah, I'm still getting over it, actually. I went on the scales this morning. and I've lost nearly a stone in white because... Obviously, it's a very dry country, although I don't I only drink a beer a night. Mm. But I lived on the catering, which was rice and vegetables. I've never eaten as healthy for a week. So you reckon it was that, just being like clean and like routined? And yeah, I just didn't eat much. I slept most of the time. I probably lost body mass because I was horizontal for the whole time <laughs> I was there. Honestly, they made a video of how much I slept. But like, I did... Matt said Matt Jones was there the week before, and he said he said it was like quite tough, but all right. But the all right bit was a lie. It was just tough. It was, <laughs> no, was it really? Like, yeah, I got it's there. It's a big deal though, dude. Dakar's massive. Hey, don't isn't get it? me wrong. Yeah, it was overwhelming. Yeah. It was, so I got there and I went to this lush hotel and I was like, here we go. It's all right. Red Bull Motorsports. They know how to do it. <laughs> and then I get a text. We pick you up at five a.m., which is three three a.m. UK time, right? And I was not ready for that. So I walked out the hotel at 5am and left basically all my belongings in there because I was just, I didn't even, cons- well, throughout the week I found stuff I'd lost, like chargers, cables, <laughs> shoes, all sorts of shit, everything I left in that room. And then I was in a tent for the week. And then... So what sort of tent are we talking? What sort of like tent oh, setup is it? It was a lush tent. Cushy nice. one. It was a massive one. I had a bloke who followed me from bivouac to bivouac, and it was only his job to take the tent down, stick it in a pickup, drive six hours to the next one, put it up. And he was getting there a bit late, and uh, like bizarrely enough, a couple of mornings, I got out of the tent, and he was stood there, like full Arab dude in that dish dash gear, 5.30 in the morning, hello mate. Taking my tent down. Ready to go. Yeah. Wow. Ready, ready to yeah. go. Because he knows he's got a six hour drive over sand dunes yeah, to I'd get go to the get next on a plane. Bit. So it was like off no. the plane, internal flight every day for an hour. Like so did it feel like the same room every day then? It kind felt, of. So the bivouac moves it's all over the place every day <laughs> almost. And it's exactly the same as the last one. Honestly, it, it was, you never, I can't even. Honestly, it took me a whole week to kind of come to terms with the scale of it. So 3,000 people and this bivouac, like the, the cars go out in the morning, the bikes go out, they come back and then they don't stop until probably five o'clock in the morning when the cars yeah. go out. Yeah, like one first night I was there in a tent, I was asleep. And I just like, honestly, people just stand outside your tent, smoking, chatting. I was by bins, three o'clock in the morning, people are just, they're like, hey, chucking stuff. And it's like day, 24 hours a day. And twenty, yeah, and this, this, I heard this. <laughs> and it's the, and, and all night, mechanics are just testing the cars up and down the desert. It's actually like Mad Max. It's like sleeping on the pits, laying of an F one. Insane. GB. <laughs> and then I was scared to put earplugs in because I had to get up at five, three a.m. UK time. So the first two nights were tricky. I didn't really sleep much, I don't think. But then I got the earplugs in, made an arrangement with the other presenter that she'd stand outside my tent and roar until I got up. So and then, so then I had a safety. You net. had an alarm person, kind of. That's I needed solid. One. I needed one. So it's sort of like nomadic existence. It's like yeah. a. It's actually like a travelling. Uh, yeah, circus, don't get me wrong. It? Right. Like, it, it was liberating actually. Like cause yeah, there's, there's no alcohol there or anything. It's <laughs> mad week. You know, you got like nothing. A lot of time didn't have phone signal. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, it was actually, it was without a doubt one of the very maddest things I've ever witnessed and done. Like, and, and a, you know, it was amazing. Like, I was wandering around with the drivers looking at the side-by-sides. I've met Carlos Sainz, senior and junior, but senior, I've followed him since Group B days. I, so I interviewed Carlos Sainz when he got out of the Audi. And the Audi, when you saw it in the flesh, was like the most unbelievable I don't even. It's like a massive Tonka toy. Like it's they like are a model, mad, aren't they? Yeah, they're like model cars, but on the scale of a. They just. It's just actually mad. Yeah. And then the motorcyclists. Do you know the motorcyclists leave a bivouac at three a.m. 
Really? <laughs> like, yeah. Do they actually? What, yeah. just straight fifth gear? and In the Malik <laughs> well, they might have two or three hundred mark K to get before they get to this sort of 600 kilometre stage. You don't know about all that, really. So, and I said to one of them in the Mali Moto class, which is like, honestly, a box literally the size of that table, and that's all they have for the week for spares. And they have to come in after riding 300k to get to the stage, 650k through the desert on, in the special stage, off road, you know, no no roads, just dudes. And then they might do another 200k back, like honestly. And then they go and put their tent up and work on their bike. What would you put in the box? Just out of interest, as a keen motorcyclist, I'd love to know what, like, I, from my experience, gear shifters go. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the sack. <laughs> Two. Right. Right. Some rocks sack about. the gear shifters. I what mean, would you put in there? I don't even don't know. know. Really. I don't know how they did it. Like a lot of sleeping gear. But like honestly, I said to mate, <laughs> don't you fall asleep on the road then on, in the morning? And he was like, yeah, as soon as the sun comes up, he said, and you start seeing it. And, uh, he said, it's a real, yeah, it's it's like, it's the maddest thing I've ever seen. Honestly. The Did mo- you know anything about it going into it? Like, Well, I followed it like on the telly, like I guess like we all probably have over yeah, the years. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I remember, see, remember it from, remember when? Harry Vattenen crashed his car in Paris on the on the uh, prologue when it was Paris Dakar. No, and, yeah, and he, he had to finish the prologue on free wheel. So yeah, I knew I, I've always followed it. And then I met Sam Sunderland through Red Bull, did a show with him, who won it twice now. And he wasn't unfortunately he went out this time with a mechanical. But so I've followed it, yeah, mm. and I've, especially the motorbikes because I can't actually believe how risky it is for the motorcyclist. Like it's on another level. To, you, you know, you you got to be tapped to do it. What are those bikes? They are basically a 450. They are now. That, yeah, that's new, isn't it? it. That's, yeah, yeah, they limited it. Okay. And they're limited, I think, to 160k. Right. But mate, mate, we had this kid in Tobias Ep, <laughs> um, Epstra, uh, oh, Episton. What's his last name? Oh, my God. That's that, this must be... No, but it he must be Mali really Mali hard class. with that many people. Because yeah. you're covering... There's so many categories, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. how many groups actually are there? Uh, there's Mali Moto, Motorbike. And then there's side by side, but I think there's two or so three like different categories of that. You've got Challenger. So they're, they're different sizes. Are they? Widths, I, I believe, and stuff. And then oh, there's man, Ultimate, crazy. which is Signs and Lobe and all those so guys. So they're the F1. They're, they're literally that's the, out of the gate. They're as fast as an F1 car, aren't they? I they're absolutely imagine. mental. There. I would imagine that. Yeah. Was in, it was the most unbelievable vehicle I've ever set eyes on. Like, honestly, yeah. it, it was just... It's just like, I just stood and stared at it for like half an hour. I couldn't actually get my head around what oh, I was seeing cool, man. yeah it was cool hours. and then you've got the trucks and all like the lorries yeah and the I, lorries are actually playing their part on the stages like they will get to riders and I did a big piece on the safety of it and went in the, I went in the, the sort of the, the, the HQ of it and like every rider's got their number in green while they're going wow and then it changes to I think it's blue if they're stopped and if it goes red then they out. start yeah then Paris like also got it and they contact this HQ in the bivouac, and then they send a heli. And it happened when I was in there. And then, mate, it was like, you might have to leave now. We've got a, an, an, an incident. And they don't know what it is. So it could be someone, you know, it could be bad. Yeah. And uh, and then five minutes later, it was like, it's okay now. The helicopter's landed. We've had eyes on it. And, uh, yeah, you can stay, carry on. That incident's taken care of. Like, they've got 15, helico- 15 helicopters in the air. 15 helicopters in the air. It's, I think I feel like for me it's been on my radar this year mainly because firstly Matt went out there Matt Jones and yeah. then obviously you were out there I took over from him plus yeah. following Cut a little bit on social media and I feel like the Dakar has gone all these years without me paying any attention to it but all yeah. of a sudden this year I was like actually this looks oh, it feels like to me it's like the Tour de France to me well, it's, it's like, ASO all, once ASO you get into it you're like oh wow like, there's loads going on with this and like yeah, it's, it's, it's just a world you just don't know anything no, about no that's right and I didn't Honestly, you see the cars in the desert, but the machine behind it, and it's it's organised by ASO who do the Tour de France. Right. So they do that in the tour. That's it. We met a doctor that works on both and that. Yeah, it's like he yeah, had a French like it brought home just now mad the French are. Yeah. Like, honestly, it's their event, and it's just you know like who who on earth goes this is all right, and all the trucks there, and all the bikes and everything is shipped from. I mean, I don't know where about from America, but. You basically drive all your stuff down to Barcelona in November and they own a container ship and all these cars go on there and everything, bikes go on there and you, you get it out in the desert. So everything there was Euro-plated Bro. and then they drive it all back to a port there like Riyadh or something and off they go again, you know. It was like... How much work did you put in before going like to figure out, you know, you're meeting all these people? Mm, none. Okay. No, none. But... But it was, it was supposed to be that way actually. Okay. Like, I spoke to Scott from Cut and he was like, yeah... I was so 
it's always quite difficult. Not difficult, but different because normally I'm used to hosting. But mm. I was a guest on this one, right? Which I like. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. it. It's great. But I, they actually asked me not. I said I'll start research. He said, No, no, no. Ask the oh, questions awesome. on air and find out on air. And you know that way you can probably relate to a viewer a bit more. I didn't yeah. want to go in there too knowledgeed up. Yeah. But the wow factor was on another scale, honestly. And I'm, yeah. Like, yeah. I need to catch up with it. I th- it's one of those things that I think I, if I dip my toe in, I'd just become addicted to it. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, I just yeah, thought, yeah. oh, my God, there's yeah, so much going on. Do it. I've had yeah. it with the tour and with Dakar. Like, certain years I get into it and then I'm That's just right. in. And it's like the more you put in, the more you almost right. get yeah. out. It's like exponential. So I remember watching Dakar and it was like this whole world I hadn't even, yeah, you know, I've no idea about it. But it's out there happening. Yeah. And this is like massive money and like crazy tech. Like, you talk about the Audi car that's like electric and it's like cool. all this sort of stuff that's happening. Yeah, with a, sort of a, an engine on board to power the batteries that power the wheels. I mean, it was like, so it was full electric drive. Yeah. I mean, Carl, honestly, Carlos signed. I, I couldn't believe it. He's like, they're in there for six hours a day, more. All the drivers puke. It's so gnarly. They take all sorts of anti-sickness meds because because even them, these professional drivers ain't used to, yeah. one stage in the um, marathon stage, not the marathon stage, excuse me, the chrono stage they called it, they did 650 kilometres of sand dunes, like just sand dunes. So that's just you. Yeah, and he just said you just go up, you just day. down, and like, yeah, <laughs> people puke everywhere. The drivers make some ill. And Sainz is 61 years old. I followed him from Group B, and then I'm sat in a room with him. Honestly, I shit myself. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I had to go and interview him as well. And the hardest thing was stopping the mic shaking. I don't yeah, really get on that. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, yeah I could see it cool. going. I was like, focus. Use the force. That's so <laughs> sick. <laughs> and then I called him King Carlos and said, cheers, mate. Oh, Sound. Yeah, that's right. He was so... After two weeks in that motor, all right, he'd won, so he was in a good mood. But when he came in the studio, he was so, so gracious and had time and shook me hand. And, oh, yeah, that's cool, amazing, mate. Amazing. Yeah, he's one of the best drivers on earth. So yeah. it was super cool. And that was his four, third try and last try. He said the last bullet with Audi and they did it. So, amazing. Yeah, mint. Cool yeah, storylines wow. and stuff happening. Yeah, which again, really, it's cool, isn't it? Like happens, but you don't. For me, like you don't know anything about no, it. Was it. Amazing. I was, you know, what a privilege to get at that. That's, yeah, yeah it was mad. It was mad. Yeah. So sick. Good work. So, you've, you, are you done plugging the deck? Or can we plug your movie now? Oh, let's <laughs> plug my film. <laughs> man! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are we gonna do it? Because we've watched it. We've had. A, can we, we talk about it? We've had our first premiere. Can we talk about it. Yeah. Let's yeah. not. We won't do spoilers. No, no spoilers. spoilers, mate. No, no okay. spoilers. You got to go you know, watch it. You've seen it. You know what it's about. It's yeah. a bit different. <laughs> I feel like we should go over what it's approximately about without giving anything away. Do you think you could do that? Yeah. Yeah. You reckon, yeah? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we can talk about that. The, the, the premise, you it's, know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah, so not doing the World Cup commentary anymore about ended me. I won't, You're not? Yeah, <laughs> I won't lie, yeah. No, I haven't talked about it much. But it did, it was it was really wild, actually. I can't still really get to terms with, um, yeah, I don't really understand why it messed me up so much. Like, it absolutely destroyed me. It, yeah. Yeah, he's still only really now. It was like a good 18 months of absolute grief, depression, mm. I suppose. I don't know. I've never really been depressed, but I've never gone as dark as that, mate. It, it really, and I still don't really know why, but anyway, you know, I finally came out of it last year. I'm like, I knew we were going to be doing Beyond the Line, so I made myself go to some World Cups because I knew I needed to level up as I wasn't going to be able to operate and present. Like, I was, it, I, it was dark. So, I mean, what did going to World Cups look like when you were going to World Cups? Like Fort oh, William, for instance. Yeah, what oh, were you doing you at the World Cup? Yeah, I did. That's what I asked, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in a good place. No. Did you? Yeah, you could say that's fair enough. Yeah. But I had to go, and that was the start of me recovering a little bit, actually. You know, I didn't we were reluctant go there. to go, though. Huh? Like, we were reluctant to go. Oh, mate, it took everything. I had to go there, yeah. and then I acted weirder than I've ever acted. When the finals were on, I went and sat on my own so I could hear the results in the woods on my own. I just sat in the woods on my own listening to the results. I couldn't. Mm. It, you know, and obviously the you know the whole time into it, like the year before the la- or when was it 2022? That last year of, I mean, that's when I started to have like a breakdown, probably. And yeah. it was, I mean, I can remember, like we got the news. That was one thing, and then and then as the season went on, like obviously I was running out of races to commentate on, commentate on, and I love commentating on ra- mountain bike races because it's literally the only thing in life that I've ever been good at, right? That's, that's how I see it, literally. So, you know, and and then in Andorra, actually, 
but we had a we had to go live at a pre-show because there was a change just before it. Flooker could just pulled out or something. And they were like, right, I'm going to do the pre-show again, change it. And we nailed it. We nailed this pre-show live, like minutes to go before we went into the commentary. <clears throat> and then afterwards, and I, I'll tell you this now, right? This is how Bart was one of my, is probably one of my best friends. And I've never spoke to him since this all went down. Like, I Really, yeah. Turned, I didn't speak to no one, mate. I spoke, I've fallen out with Martin Ashton because he works for, for GMB. And I fell out with everyone. You know, I, yeah. Bad. I've, I've apologised to Martin now the other day, but probably then people will never be the same with me again. But I, I was, you know, for want of a better word, I was absolutely fucked. I didn't get out of bed for two weeks, mate. I was oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I cried every day. I was angry. It was like grief. It was like grief. At one point, mate, I, like, I, I got, I speak to this professor, I, Professor Copeland. I don't think he'll mind me saying that. Like, and it came about because I had a good commentary once and I said to him, I want to reenact that, and he helped me. He's a sports psychologist, not a shrink. Not that I've ever spoke to a shrink, but I speak to him, and and it took me probably months before I even rung him. And I was and I, I was like, I'm in the shit here, mate. I'm, you know, I'm really in the shit here, actually. And then he um and then he said, write down all your positive things for like a week, and I I couldn't write anything down except I went out in the garden and saw a leaf had grown on this fucking olive tree that I got. And that was the only, because it had been a bad winter frost-wise, and that was the only thing I could think of that was like, wow. was a positive thing. So I was pretty dumb. And I still, yeah, I still can't really put a finger on it why, but it was my life really, I suppose, yeah. 30 years on that tour. And, and I never really performed as a mountain bike race, and I'll tell you why in a little bit probably. But like, you know, to, to yeah, I don't know. It was just ripped out from under our feet. It was me. I did it for 12 years with Red Bull. Red Bull took me on as this, you know, after Freecaster. They took a massive chance on me, really. They did. I'm fucking loose as. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Especially you know. those days. Yeah, I was out of control. Like, I'd been all the way through my mountain bike career. And all the way through everything I've ever done. School, mm. college. I never had a job. I couldn't. I had jobs. I got fired from everyone. I got kicked out of school. Mm. So, so that, you know... It was a massive thing to be professional, to learn, and very hard to learn how to be a commentator and then do my bollocks on it, you know, absolutely put everything into it. Yeah, I, I can see why it killed me a bit because I almost thought that nothing will ever compare to that commentary again, and that might be true at the moment. Nothing's quite mm. as good as commentating on a World Cup yet, but we're coming back with Seto Abajo and, like, hard lines coming. But, you know, the World Cup, I was a part of that as a rider, so it, it is special to me, and I loved all the stats and I loved all, yeah, I loved it all. I loved it. I loved going in the commentary and broadcast and I love making it. I didn't love it. I hated making the transition from freecaster to being a professional commentator. It took me years and yeah. thousands and thousands of pounds mm. spent by Red Bull with like um, Gary Bloom. You know, it was, it was the gnarliest thing ever. So I guess through all that, it's quite easy to see why, it, <clears throat> why it's like part, a big part of your own identity, I guess, how you see yourself. Yeah, I think so. Like people, it was an people, obsession for me, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, but. was there um, like an opportunity to fight back at all? You know, like obviously you said you got the news of like, okay, it's transitioning to a different broadcast group. However you want to put it, was there an opportunity there where you were like, whoa, hang on, I can carry on, or was it no, almost not like really. rug pulled, almost like no, this is it. It's done. It was so when we found out, it was literally like the rug had been pulled out. I yeah. think I, I, I don't really like to talk on behalf of Red Bull, but. For me, it was like, has that really happened? But it didn't sink in at the time. And and then, you know, like, well, that's what I was talking about. We did that pre-show live. And then Bart, after the show, Bart said, it made me cry to say it. Do you want to do a break? Yeah. All right, we'll hear a quick break and we, uh, we'll be right back. Davey, I've got a question for you, dude. Please. I've broken my hand. I've broken my arm. I don't want to make this about me. But I do want to be back on my bike as soon as possible. Mm. Okay. So what's the question? You got any tips? I, I want to be back amongst it, dude. Yeah, okay. I've got a couple of tips for you. Now, Please. obviously, you want to be giving your body the ultimate opportunity okay. to heal. Okay. How would, wh how would you do that, though? Okay. You want to be putting good stuff into it. Okay. What you eat okay. is what you are. Yeah. That's what they say, isn't it? You yeah, know yeah, yeah. They do say that. Yeah. Okay. I so you want to put before. in optimal nutrition. Okay. Thank okay. you for... Teaser there. Yeah. Optimal nutrition. 
whole food source ingredients, vitamins, okay. and minerals. This all sounds like it makes sense. Hey, man, we have an opportunity right here with the little green tub. What? what, 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 what? Okay. You said all those different things. Yeah. Like that sounds like, like what? what is it? Like pills, capsules, loads of like things that you mix together. And you. it sounds like quite a long job in the morning. I don't know if I'm up for that. Some people do it like that. And those yeah. some people live in the dark ages, babe. But we don't do it like that. Right. We do it with AG1. A simple whole food sourced scoop of goodness. Okay, you get right. it. You put your little scoop in the little green tub. That's okay. what that green tub. That's is. what they green I thought tub. That's a Bluetooth speaker. No, it's not actually. No, no, better than Bluetooth. No way. way better than Bluetooth. Yeah. So you, you basically, man, it's simple. All you have to do is have a scoop in the morning. Best taken on an empty stomach. All right. Well, you just give scoop you, it into straight into your mouth. Well, you can scoop it straight into your mouth if you yeah. want to do it like that. If you want to raw dog it, yeah. or you can just put it into some water. Okay, swirl it around. Right, that makes more sense now. Mm. Yeah, okay. I've been known to do it like that a few times, though. Just, just dry. scoop and then flush just it straight down. take a deep down. breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just don't breathe out. Um, but, mate, it's super easy. I love it. It's part of my daily routine now, right? And it has been for ages. Okay. And I, I don't think I'd be the same person without it. Well, I, I, I literally wouldn't. I'd be a different person. I wouldn't be as optimal. Dude, believe it or not. The ads would be boring. Believe it or not. <laughs> I was joking earlier when I said uh, said I thought that was a Bluetooth speaker. I knew exactly what yeah, it was because exactly. I also take it twice a day, every day, yeah. twice at the minute because I just think, why not? Because I've got broken bones and I feel so. Like we're both double dabbing at the moment. We're double dabbing. Yeah, I've been double dabbing yeah. for a minute with with all of the sickness and stuff going around, viruses. A lot of go. people are ill at the moment. I've been doing morning and evening AG one hits. There you go. And I, hey, I seem to be avoiding everything. So, and you seem to be healing up. Yeah, I mean, I'm not looking well, great at the minute, but fingers no, but crossed we're going to sort of move <laughs> on quickly. <laughs> so if you want to be as optimal as me and you, yeah, all you have to do is go to drinkag1.com slash the ride companion. That's drinkag1.com slash the ride companion. Of course, there's going to be a little deal for you there, okay? They're going to throw in five free travel packs. They can't. They can. And they're going to give you a bottle of vitamin D3. They cannot do that as well. They can do that as well. We will do that as well because that's the sort of people that we are. Wow. What is there, a code? Yeah, the code is the Ride Companion. No, there's that? not. There's not a code. There isn't a code. What you just go to the URL, drinkag1.com, the Ride Companion. It's right here on screen. No code necessary. So that's what it is. So just do it all for you. So optimal nutrition. The Ride Companion. Yeah, optimal nutrition, optimal ways of getting the deal. You don't have to go around. You don't have to put codes in. You don't have to mess around. It's just right there. Delivered, and they deliver it to your door. You don't have to walk to somewhere and get it. Can I do it? Can I just... Clip on optimal for the finish of this ad. Yeah, please. You wrap this thing up for us. Optimal. Thanks, AG1. Thanks, AG1. Sorry. We'll talk about it in a bit, but actually, don't worry if I cry. I've got no control over my emotions, which is actually a thing. So anyway, and he said afterwards, I'll miss these days with you, Rob. And then I ended up that night. Walking down the high street in Andorra, with all the sh- I went shopping to take my mind off things. I, f- I was just walking down the street, there's people everywhere, and I just started crying, mate. It was like fucking tears coming out of my eyes. I was like, what is going on here? Like, mm. whoa, whoa, whoa. And that was the start of me breaking down. And I don't really know how I got through them commentaries, but I loved it so much that I did, and I didn't really let it, I didn't let it slip. I, I did one shit one in... Monson and cross country because I was I put so much into like Finn won the day before and I knew it was yeah. probably like the last swan song so I went I did I went big on it it was cool <laughs> but yeah so that was the start of it and then limp through them commentaries and, and also it wasn't like and it was hard for everyone I worked really closely with Chris on this series you know and um, Chris Trich my boss and it, without him it would never have been what it was mm. like. Like he has insane like production values that I love. I always went, I, I was desperate to do a perfect broadcast. I reckon I came close in Leah Gang once. I did because it was yeah short track and quite an easy sort of track to commentate. Okay. Yeah, I had all these obsessions with it, but but you know yeah, me and Trich and Trich actually a few months afterwards said something that I won't say here, but just really yeah. Mate, it sounds like you've had amazing people around you as well. That's yeah, the thing. Exactly. It's not it like was, the commentary is it, but it's mate. all of it, isn't it? It's like the whole experience for all those yeah. years. Like. And then we had Jamie come in with, you know, it was this fella who was just, for the last three or four years of it, that oh, he was, I mean, for a start, he was English and just so much fun. But he was just um, incredible, like a genius with words, a genius with like creativity and making just, out of the air he's like right you do this you do that and he's you know he was mm. 
So I had amazing people around me to do it. And obviously, when you've got amazing people around you, you know you've got to be amazing, right? And I'm difficult as fuck to work with, right? I'm a pain in the ass. And Red Bull put up with all that. I'm, you know, I ain't easy, man. I was, you know, I was late today. I'm late for everything. I'm all over the place. So for them to stand by me, me not being an ass kisser, I don't reach out to people. I knew that I had to be the Basically, my work ethic is just to be the best I can be and hopefully, you know, be really yeah. good. Because this is the only way I'm going to hold on to this job that I love so much. So that was almost the <clears> motivation <throat> to be to do it as well as, as I did it, which was definitely to the best of my ability. Mm. I think a lot of it gets lost because th- the whole broadcast was so slick. I think the amount of work, it, it all seemed natural. It was slick yeah. because of the work. Yeah, 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 yeah. But because it seemed natural, which is probably a lot down to you and your style or whatever... But I think probably people don't realise maybe quite how. I, I tell you what, someone someone um, asked me if if uh, if I would ever want to do it, and I, I absolutely I know how much goes it. Well, I know how much I think goes in, and it's not. No, you got to live it. I yeah. Think so to do, I especially to learn it, I did. Like I used to, I'd go off on tangents and like research and commentary, which is pretty easy to do. And, you know, you'd find a rider from there and you oh, who's that? And then you'd go on Roots and Rain and that'd lead you down another rabbit hole. Yeah. And sometimes before a broadcast, I'd easily stay up till two in the morning doing notes, right? And I'd have a note on everyone who's in that final, which was the top 30 men or whatever, which, you know, and top 15 women, wasn't it? So, or top 10 women. But I would always, there's always some people in there you never knew, but I'd always make sure I have something on them. I don't know. But in the end, I was like, it was wearing me out a bit and I'd notice it the next day. So towards yeah. when, I got, when I got on top of it, then um, I'd always have a rule to try and stop by 10, 11 o'clock at night. Otherwise it would affect the broadcast. But yeah, we, I was all in. I was abso- it was the hardest thing, mate. I had a bloke called Gary Bloom, like I said, and to work with him and have him... Ta- I'd come out of Freecaster thinking I was the absolute mutt's nuts at commentary, right? <laughs> like I was drunk. All the fans <laughs> loved me. I came out with the most outrageous one-liners that would get me arrested now. Like the stuff I said was insane, but people loved it and that was the start of it. It's unbelievable that Red Bull took me on, actually, when I look back. It was a different time, <laughs> yeah. but, like, you know, and, and do you know what? I, will, I You know, I've hopefully always worked for Red Bull now because it's the only place I've ever fitted in. Yeah. And, it, and it's because it's because they're very direct, and, and I like that. You know, it works for the way I work. So, but, and, and, of course, that last year, those races as well, like, everyone, I was, I, it was overwhelming, the comments, and on site, I couldn't move without people coming up to me. I couldn't move without people coming up to me. It won't be the same without you, Rob. It ain't going to be yeah. the same. And each time, and that happened, like, I can't even explain. Yeah. That's all I heard. A bloke yeah. was crying. In America, a bloke cried. He was like, I've seen this before. We're going to miss you and all this shit, you know. And, like, it took its toll on me. It did. It fucking tore a little piece of me away each time until basically there was nothing left. Yeah. And in, in Val de Sole, I did finish the commentary and... The next morning, I come out of the hotel, and this bloke heard me talking to someone who was wanted an autograph or something. And he was like, are you Rob Ward? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, my kid loves you. And I thought, well, you don't know who I am, mate. And, and for the first time ever, he goes, I'm going to go and get my kid. And I was so dumb. I was absolutely dumb. I had to get in my car, and I, I, just, I just walked, mate. I got in my car and went. I didn't even wait. And, that, you know, I wouldn't do that, but that's how. Yeah. And then I'd come home, and then that winter was, whew, it's that like, was a heavy winter, mate. And I don't suffer depression, right? I don't think I've ever been depressed in my life, honestly. And I don't even know if it was depression. It was like grief. It was like grief. But I couldn't get over it. It went on for 18 months. Like, it did. Until I went to Fort William. And then, well, no, even last year, in, and I went to Ligier, and we did a bit of work there. And these things started to help me come back a bit. But, it, yeah, I was rinsed. I was absolutely yeah. destroyed. In what way? Just, like... Empty. Would you would you watch any of the, for instance, any of the broadcasts? No, I can't. Well, I can't even. No. I really? Haven't. Yeah. Oh, no, and now I can't listen to. I, so, <clears throat> which is a bad because for beyond the line, I do need to be on top of it a bit, and I probably will again. But sometimes I follow, you know, the UCI mountain bike World Cup Instagram, but then I have to turn it off because yeah. it will ruin my day a bit. Right. And you know, that's nothing against who's doing it now. It's because I ain't doing it in my mind. You yeah. know. Yeah. So, yeah, it was brutal. It was brutal, and, and you know that ain't just me that's gone through it. I know that, you know, people at work don't they, they don't talk about it, but I know I know that a lot of people went through it like I did. Yeah, 
lot Mate, of when people you start were really closely with. Like that, yeah, it was ours, like man. We did it. And like, Every, all that recent, like all that time, and then it just stops. Mate, there's no it was wonder the only you've struggled. Thing I've ever done that I was, good, yeah, you know, and it was, you know, yeah. and, and actually, it's hard for me even sit here and say, yeah, I was a pretty good commentator, like, but I know I was because people say it, but like, you know, yeah, I don't know. It was just, it, it was all in on it. It was an obsession. I loved it, and it's gone. But then, you know, I've got other things coming now. But, but yeah, yeah, but mate, super unique thing to go through that not many people can relate to. I think we can all relate to the fact that it's not the same, right? Without you, we can all relate to that. But to like, you know, for you, obviously, to feel like you've got a sport on your back at that point and like, oh, man. Yeah, a little bit like that. And all, that you know, I guess you, you're probably like a little bit of, of like guilt, a little, not guilt, but like you feel like it's not going to be the same without you. I don't know. It's hard to. I, yeah, it's hard. I mean. What you'd be going through your head. I loved is, it. And obviously I'd raced it, remember. I, you know, it was mm. my career. I'm a motorcycle rider, though, really. I, I, I am. I mean, yeah. you know, that's what I totally sort of see myself as, really, which is a bit weird as well, because I'm much more successful at mountain biking, <laughs> much, much more. But but all my skills came from motorbikes. bikes. For the first 20 years of my life, it wasn't mountain mm. bikes. I just rode motorbikes. bikes. Yeah. And, you know, so, yeah, it's wild. But I am through it. I am through it. And, uh, you know, I got asked to do a podcast every week last year, and I didn't do any, and this is the first time now like the film's coming out and I just need to draw a line under it. The film's yeah. like, the film's the end of it. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Bad break. Oh, okay. dude, 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 it's the ad break, right? Yeah. We're What's in the better ads. when you do the ad break than having the product here with you? Nothing. Nothing is better than that and we don't have it and I'm really annoyed because it's one of my favourite products to do ads for. Also one of mine. What I thought though, mm. a way of getting around it is that maybe I could make the noise and you guess what it is okay it's novel it's amusing it's this is a yeah. good idea play a long it? game for our listeners are you up for it and viewers yeah I'll, I'll give it a shot i'm gonna try and do the noise i'm quite good at noises actually i'm known for being fairly good at noises I human think. beatbox some people call yeah, it yeah 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 okay you got it yet <laughs> where is it in the house okay it's the reason it's not here today is because it's next to my bike. Bike. Near where I wash it. Bike, not bad. Okay. Not bad. Okay. And that is obviously going to be. It's probably quieter than that. It's more, probably more like. Hey, they doubled the power, so maybe hit it a little harder. Really? Yeah. Okay. No, it was not that loud. Too loud, too loud, too loud. <laughs> obviously, it's a Works Hydro Shot, okay? And we've got a really nice little from the heart ad read because we recently visited works at their offices. Oh, it was good, wasn't it? So good to meet the team. It's been, I mean, works have been with us. They've been with the podcast for probably like five, six years. One of the longest running sponsors. Dude, works got better when we visited the team. Yes. First of all, works, yes. the dream. Lived in a flat at the time. Didn't yep. have a water supply. Yeah. It literally saved, saved me, the yeah. hydro shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was the same for me, if you remember. We, we were having similar experiences with the hydro shop. Yeah. I was living in a home. We didn't have a garage. Bikes live upstairs. I had to wash it every exactly single time. Same, yeah. I brought it in the house. Otherwise, it was me, me, me from the other half, right? Uh, how did that go again? Because you did a good noise then. Yeah, I'll do, I'm will do. i not doing it again. Okay, you don't do it again. Yeah, don't do it again. Yeah. Mm. So I started washing my bike outside. It was super yeah. easy. I'd take the bucket through the house. I'd come outside. Obviously, the works hydro shop draws water from any source. Dude, easiest advert to do ever. Yeah. It cleans your bike. It really helps. And then we visited the team. Yep. And it got better. The team were lovely, weren't they? So nice. So nice. Yeah. And they're just in it for the right reasons. They know they've got a good tool for mountain bikers. And basically, yeah. not just mountain bikers, anyone who likes clean stuff. Yeah. I like clean That's stuff. That's true. You, you do know, like I clean everything stuff. with the Hydro Shot. Clean your wellies? Clean the wellies. I've done wellies in it for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Riding boots, riding kit when you come back, quick hose down. Um, I've done gutters, I've done windows, I've done everything with it. Yeah. And of course, our listeners are going to want to check this thing out, right? So where do they go? Right. Well, I actually don't know where they go. Perfect. Maybe. Okay, so they go to uk.works.com. uk.works.com. Or if you just search works, depending on what country you're in, you're going to find the website. And then if you want to get a bit of a deal, you're going to get 15% off. At the, work. The, surely the deal is just that it's the best. Mm, the, the, the deal is us telling you about the best product, but that that isn't the deal because there's a bit there's, of there's more on to the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't tell me this. Yeah, okay. So you can head to works.com or uk.works.com, your local works website. Your yeah, local yeah, yeah. works website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and enter the code, the ride companion. You're going to get yourself a whopping 15% off. Anything, nothing on site. That's drills. That's lawnmowers. That's 
Well, it doesn't just work for the hydro shop. It's everything, dude, on site. So you mean I can? I've got the chainsaw as well. Mm-hmm. I do some track building with. Yeah, that's also included. Yeah, and you got the PowerShare battery, battery, haven't you? So you can yeah, swap I have, that yeah. between all the different tools. And I've stuff, got the so. PowerShare battery in my Hoover as well. I've got the Works Hoover yeah, as well. Same. I've got that. And you just got, got a cool well. box as well. Yeah, the cool box yeah. as well, and the battery just interchanges. Yeah. Dream. What could be better? Nothing. I tell you what could be almost better. Back to the episode. Back to the episode. Let's get back. Thanks, Works. Thanks, Works. There's one direction to where you were at and loving it. Yeah, and, so it, was, it, and it was 30 years in the making. Yeah, that's... Exactly, yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So it's yes. a 30-year part I start something that you Cup. feel like you're really fucking good at. So it, it's, not, yeah. it's not a stupid thing to that's be only, sad about. It's, and it's not the just only, a job, is it? And no. it's the only thing I've ever been good at. You did so, win a World Cup, so I think that's sort of slightly did, bollocky. You did rain. Yeah, but it does rain. <laughs> it rains a lot. It rains most of them. <laughs> it rains at most of them. Yeah, but not when everyone else is... <laughs> oh, I'll just after I'd come down. But, you know, I don't care about that. But the year the year after, I was like... I was third all, I was third all year of the like, year after. It was mint. I was on all the podiums most of the year. Five, I think, out of seven. And, and then and I went into the last World Cup with a number two plate. And it was Caprun that I'd won the year before. And I got pissed the night before. Like, literally, I got drunk the night before most World Cups, right? And when, like, Palmer, what, I mean, if he's telling you, one day he said to me, get drunk after the race, idiot. You know, that, like, you know, and I wasn't alcoholic or anything. I was just loose and wild. And, you know, like, like so I'm, I'm going to put some stuff out there today mm. that I never have that, that, because the last six years, I suppose they've been a bit odd. They haven't certainly been as bad as the last two. But And it's taken me six years to come out and say it. And I'm going to struggle to say it. But, yeah, six years ago, I found out I have autism. And a thing called, um, which was a fucking weird thing to find out when you're 47 years old. Yeah. You know, Christ. Like, I've lived my whole life. And, and everything, like just fell in place behind that. Like, like, mum told me the other day that at nursery, I went there a week and they said, please don't bring him next week. I was, you know, I just smashed everything up as a baby. I was out of control. Primary school, I just remember just being out of control and took in, taking poos in the swimming pool and like working outside the headmaster's <laughs> desk, sat next to the headmaster's desk and I used to break pens with pressure, like, you know, I was mm. out of control and then, and then, and then secondary school, you know, I was in naughty class. Like, I still got a lot of their mates now. And, you know, and then I, in, a, in a naughty class, I sat there with a lighter under the table and set fire to a table. And then I got moved from there and had to work outside the headmaster's office. I used to go to school with a handful of golf balls. And at lunchtime, I'd throw them on the car, onto, the, onto the playground as hard as I could. And you just big boy, and you'd hear a window smash or car, teacher's <laughs> cars got dented. I was on report. All the, most of the time, mum and dad never knew. I used to forge my signature. Yeah, yeah. I can forge now. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I used to forge my signature all the time. I was, you know, I was a rent. I did well not to get expelled out of school. Mm. And, and it was because of autism. But I didn't know that at the time. Everyone teach, taught me. So I have this thing called PDA, right, which is um, pathological demand avoidance. It's been quite a trip finding all this stuff out. Like, which means I don't like being told what to do, right? It's as simple okay. as that. Yeah. And even today, I said to you, like, I said to myself, I'll leave at nine this morning. I left at 10 because nine actually became a demand on me. And I was like, nah, I'll go at 10, you know, and that didn't become a demand. So I made it by half 11. But you imagine how weird that is. Like, if you're texting me about going riding, if I don't text you straight back and I think about it, it becomes a demand. It might, it's an effort for me to text you back and say, yeah, I'll come. Also, there's the social side of it as well. So this is something that you found out six years ago. This is when when you went in for what? what yeah. What how, was, come, yeah. how did you end up because finding out? Because I don't, I, I don't. I'm pretty private, but someone close to me found out. A lot of people are going to find out like this because pe- kids now get get. At yeah. school, it gets picked up easier. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I started to see it a bit, and I was like, I ain't got that, have I? And then I was like. I read a bit online, you know, or, autistic sort of things, and I was like, yeah, I notice every number plate when I'm driving a car. I read every number plate that goes by, and, like, it says things like routes are different, like, routes important, like, 
routine. I was like, I ain't got a routine. And then I was like, mm, I do drive to Enley every day for a bacon sandwich. And on the way home, it's quite a decision whether I go left or right, up this way or this way, up this valley. And it started to dawn on me. And actually, then other things happened as well. And, and, and then, like I said, I thought I was really stupid, right? And this leads into the commentary, right? Mm. So I thought I was thick. I acted thick. All them, a lot of them kids around me that I was mates with at school ended up on substances. Like loads of them do. Loads of them end up in prison. Like, you know, naughty kids. I had good parents, luckily. And like, I had an interest. More than anything, I had an interest of motorcycle trials. Yeah. And I would, so I got kicked out of school, secondary school. They made, that mum and dad made me go to college. I lasted two months at Enley College and got kicked out of there because I didn't turn up, because I was only interested in riding motorbikes. Dad made me get an apprenticeship at Rope. No. And then Dad said, right, I'm not buying you any more motorbikes. Finished with you. You know, you're naughty. You're out of control. The rows I'd have. The rows I'd have. A trial once, I tried to load my bike on the back of the car on a trailer, and I went, temper, and I let it go, man. It went off the trailer and up the back of the car. Like, I was out of control. I was wild. And then, and then he made, so I wanted a new trials bike, because that was my obsession, and he said, you're going to do an apprenticeship at Rover. I've worked in a factory all my life. But, you know, and he actually, bless dad, he thought it was a good living, you know, and it was a good living in the bloody 60s or whatever. Yeah. But I was not interested in earning 200 quid a week on a production line. Anyway, I had to go and do it. And I, I lasted six months on this production line, doing the same job every two minutes, putting wiring harnesses in Rover 800s. And I was like, this ain't what I want in life. And I even had trouble there. I walked off the job and because a bloke fucking punched me because I said Kate Moss was shit. Look, not Kate Moss, Kate Bush. I was like, turn that crap there. Yeah, it was rough as in there. Yeah. So I walked off the job and, there, and then the cars got round, I don't know, like half a mile to the next station where my bit mattered. They had to stop the production line for like 20 minutes. I think it was 10 grand a minute they lost. Really? So that didn't last. And then dad got me an apprenticeship and then, I mean, oh my God. So I've got a thing called dyspraxia as well, which is like clumsiness, if you like, carrot fingers. That's why I can't work on bikes, right? I'm, I, okay. I really struggle. But, but um, what was I saying? But so, so w- we were talking about how you got this, how you went through finding out. With all of these individual separate things, did they just sort of, as soon as you found out, did they fit into place? Did it did it make a lot no, of it sense took a in long life? Time. Okay. It took yeah, I was definitely in denial for a long, long time, and it, and then. I don't remember when I accepted it, but I remember that I cried every day for eight days, and I mean sobbed, like I was gutted. I'd spent my life as a stupid person, thick, thought I was thick. I mean, I act, I've acted thick in the past. People, people, I've always acted a bit dumb, because I thought that's how I was. And um, Actually, so you, you, thought, you thought you were dumb, oh, so mate, you acted dumb. Y- yeah, but there were so many things that upset me about it when I really got into it, like autistic spectrum disorder. Oh, great, I've got a disorder. What's disorder about it? It's actually only about order. Like, why am I disordered? I've come, you know, I've lived 47 years of my life like this. All right, it's been a bit of a mess, but now I was commentating at this time, remember? Mm. And I knew I was a bit, you know, I knew I wasn't an absolute idiot. Um, I saw some people who both, two people told me I needed to take medicine, medication, that fucked me. Mm. I wouldn't take medication for nothing. It's my head. It's mm. been all right for 47 years. Why yeah. would I take medication? That really, 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 really upset me, that did. Yeah. I held it together in this place and I walked out and I just burst into tears again. Yeah. Yeah. But when I found out I had it, I, yeah, eight days I remember and then I was like, you are who you are. It's just a label. Like, it doesn't matter. This is who you are. This is who you've been. So what about all this shit? And, yeah. and autism, right? Like, it's pretty invisible if you don't know about it. But if you know about it, you see it. I see it everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere. Lots of, most people, a lot of people are on the spectrum. They say one in 200 bullshit. And, and also, you know, well, look, yeah, I, showed, I brought this, right? Yeah, let's so, have a look. So when I, when I, when I, so all this went on and I accepted it myself and I knew I had it. And then I wanted just to go and get a proper diagnosis. Gonna, yeah, so, to, so, sorry, just to unpack, so you... You ended up getting the first diagnosis and then did it like sent you down a bit of a rabbit hole of like... No, okay. I've done all that. Right. So, no, so I, I kind of worked it out myself. Let's put it that way, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, mate, it was like horrendous though. Like I say, a disorder that, that crushed me. I mean, it shouldn't be called So that. what were your preconceptions then? Because I'm interested in that. What do you mean by that? Like, What do you thought about 
any of these words that came back on this bit of paper, what had you previously thought about them? Autism, um, oh, ADHD, well, you know, well, like things that are... Uh, well, the first thing I did was watch Rain Man, yeah. which was like the biggest mistake you can make in your life. I was like, oh my God. I mean, is that me? Like, you know, really repetitive and all them... Like, that was a bad mistake, that so, was. So that would be... The, the thing that makes that bad, I assume, would be like, oh, I didn't realise... Oh, I didn't uh, like oh, that. If that's what I'm like, I didn't realize, kind of thing. Sort of, yeah. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I was like, oh my god, I'm one of them. To be quite honest, <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> like, yeah. And yeah. then, and then, oh my god. So you know that Chris Packham, the, the BBC Wildlife presenter. Yeah. Like, so he's got it, and he went. He did a show on it, and I watched it, and it came out at that time. Actually, weirdly enough, and oh my god, it was like the bleakest thing. And that it, that almost ended me. Well, when I say that, by the way, I've never had a suicide or anything thought in my mind ever. I'm a life liver, and I just, I just like the World Cup, and that was I was just desperate to recover so I can get on my life again. And same with this, actually. But this finding out I had autism did not hit me as hard as losing a World Cup. But you see, the World Cup is like. It changes really serious thing for an autistic person. So right, yeah. So it was like. And it's like the biggest change. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely. And it was and only, it's like really positive. And, and it was then, the only thing that made me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, it was, I was mm. good at it, mm. you know. But I watched this show and he was like, oh, I tried to kill myself a few times. And, and then he, he went to this, um, he, went, he went to an American clinic. So autism is annoying in that you can't get rid of it, really. So, like, every time I go to an airport, three days before, I will start. I'll probably be in a bit of a bad mood, and it's a I you ca I can't explain. Like I hate airports. Like I hate. It's bright. I always wear sunglasses, but the, like the noise. There's people everywhere. There's queues, and then I have to get on a plane and sit next to someone close, and it's yeah. disgusting. I'm germaphobe. I'm an absolute hypochondriac. I don't like it. Don't speak to me. Don't look at me. I, I, and then when I get off a plane, I'm so stressed out. Like, that I'll go to get in a car, and nine times out of ten, and Red Bull are always give them their own car. It's like they knew. I don't know if they know or not. <laughs> well, some of them know because I've told them because I'm so out there sometimes. And I get in a car, and honestly, nine times out of ten, it would take me three hours to do an hour's journey. I get lost. My ADHD is out of control. I can't follow a sat-nav. I can't work anything out, like, honestly. And then, and this is like, you know, Red Bull makes so many allowances for me. Like, you wouldn't want to be my travel agent. I am out of control <laughs> with stress. And then, and then I'll get there, and, and, and usually day one of a, when I go to a World Cup, or when I went to a World Cup, I'd spend in a hotel room, and I would not leave that room. I get room service. I stay in there from the morning mm. till the night. I might be out in the evening for some bit of fresh air, but I would sit and research. And that, all day, and that is like therapy. Like a comfort blanket. Oh, my God, man. I love like the where stats. You, yeah. Just sat on the bed watching videos, making notes. I'm never happier. And then I go mm. and deliver it in a commentary box. But this Chris Packham thing like that, and he went in this American treatment where, like, like it's a school where they basically knock it out of you. Like, it's like... Like, I don't know, there's a process, there's a name for it where, I don't know, like like electric shock therapy almost to someone, you know, it's like, you're going to get, and they reckon it works. But he went in and he was like, oh God, the windows are all out of, not sit, and I like symmetry and I don't like shitty, over, I, I like this, some some rooms I've come in, some I really don't, some I really feel on edge and it's probably to do with the symmetry of the room. Yeah. Like, it's a pretty mad thing to tell you all this because I don't know how it works myself. It's like bizarre to me as it is anyone else, like to say this, like, what? What's going on in my head? I'm just why like yeah. your windows, I'm Mac. That's all it is. And if there was more Macs in the world, then I wouldn't have to fit in. But at the moment I'm in minority, so it's very hard for me to fit in to a normal world. That's how it is. Yeah. I don't so this disorder thing really upset me. It's not a disorder. I'm just different. And looking back, do you feel like there's a there's a term I guess people use for this a lot, like about masking? Oh yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, it, is yeah, it, yeah. So and this isn't about me at all, but I've definitely had in, in the past a conversation with my partner about it where I'll say like, look, I would feel like shit inside, but on the outside, you'd have no idea because I'll just put on this oh, yeah. front and it's just like, oh, and you're known as that guy, like the loud, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'm... I guess it gives you that, you've always got to be that guy, mm. even if inside you're like really unhappy. Yeah, and it's exhausting. It is, ex yeah, yeah exactly. exhausting. Dakar, I slept all the time because it ruined my sla sleep pattern, <coughs> which is, so sleep is absolutely crucial to me and getting up early is not a thing I can do. Right. But on top of that, right, it's probably noisy there. It was overwhelmed. It was big trucks. There was nowhere to hide apart 
well, once my tent was there in the afternoons, I could hide in that. But yeah. until then, I was sort of exposed. Yeah, it was it was tricky. But and you know, I, I am up for that. Like yeah. I absolutely want to live my life as normal as, as I can. So mm. it's not you know I don't want everyone to listen to this and go, oh, we can't turn it with Daco again. No, I absolutely loved it. It was a hell of an experience, and I lived for those moments and mm. the visuals. Man, I can see like a big truck. I think you know I get impressed by. Like, I love volcanoes. Why? Because they're just massive. I can, like, they say you can stare at twirly things or something when you've got autism, but I stare at volcanoes. I love a view. I'll stand in for hours and look at fucking mountains or view. Yeah, I'm weird. Yeah. I know I'm weird. It's well, all right. It's well, great I am you, weird. I got autism. Yeah, the way you like to spend your time. I got autism. Mountains and and yeah. then, and then, yeah, exactly. And then, you know, I've also got this pathological demand avoidance, right? Mm. Which they're trying to change to. Uh, persistent drive for autonomy, right? Now, 96% of kids who've got that don't go to school. I did 15, 16 years of school. And I tried to be employed and all that, right? And I wondered, like, like if this, this Packham thing that nearly ended me, like, I think, I don't like it. I mean, it's his own personal take on it, but I, I, it was not, it, why is it so negative? It's not negative. What was his it? take? No. What was the... Uh, he tried uh, to kill himself a couple of times. He had a relationship with a Kestrel. It was so bleak. Not a relationship with a kid. Fucking hell. No. <laughs> Sounds feathery. <laughs> no, it was sad though. It was like when I was a kid, you know, my only friend was this Kestra and I'm like, oh, right. and I got ducks where I live and I'm like, oh, I used to love ducks. It was so bad. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it was, oh, it was a confusing time. It was wild, mate, to come through it. It was, yeah. it was wild. But like, what had you thought about it before then? I still, I'm, I'm stuck on, I'm stu- stuck on that. Because my preconceptions of any uh, one of these things, because... Um, well, you mean, what do I think of not... Well, I thought I'd walk... People with autism would walk round and round in circles. They're amazing with numbers. Um, it's Rain Man. That was my hey, take How about it. this? What's normal then? What, what What's normal? Because I think about normal... I, I think about these things quite a bit, I'll be honest. What's normal then? Because I know what I think what normal, is normal is. Or what I think... Or when I don't feel normal, I know what that is. If you know what I mean. So, do you know what I, I feel where, where you felt different, what is it? Probably most of it's anxiety. I would, I would say it's like worry yeah. and stress about things. I don't know. It's it's like, I don't mm. really, I, I, don't, I still don't really know what it is, except I'm a bit wired up a bit different. But, you know, but, yeah, it's, I was going to say something then. I've forgotten what I was going to say. Sorry, that's, that's my no, fault. No, it wasn't. No, it was good. But, like... Um, like we we were talking about pre preconceptions about what mm. you'd pr- previously thought because with things that get thrown around um ADHD for instance just well, I if got you just that. my yeah. ADHD is absolutely I would say that's almost more perhaps stronger in me than autism I don't know yeah. but the, so like like so autism will sort of make you anxious and lock you down I think and like keep you out, you know like you know, like, you're really suppressed, almost quiet, shy, you don't really want to know people, people are too much, people are weird, people are the biggest problem in my life, I don't, you can count my friends on one hand, I ain't got many, and I never ring any of them, ever, I never ring anyone, ever, I just get on with my, my daily routine, which is yeah. weird, but, but, um, but, uh, God, what was I going to say? ADHD. Yeah, but, yeah, so my ADHD, and the, and the PDA, so, the, the hyperactivity, I yeah. think it, it kind of brings me out of the autism and the PDA also brings me out of the autism in a way it battles it, right? So like PDA, an absolute fact with it is, is demand avoidance. But if the reward's big enough, then demand goes. Because I guess it's not a demand. I want to do it. Yeah. And actually... I'm on the wedge, man. <laughs> and actually, yeah, and actually, you know, I get paid well at Red Bull. It's not, I'm not lying about that. And, and that's probably a reason as well. But also they're German. They're very structured. It's very, they're very direct. Like, forget these people. Blah, blah, blah. Nah, forget it. I don't like working with Brits. I like working with direct Germans mm-hmm. because it's harsh and they tell you what it is. And also they've got high standards. And I really, 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 that was absolutely the thing that has always hooked me in with Red Bull. And it still does. It's like trying to get to the level of production that Chris set and, and Red Bull set. And, you know, and that's, that's the goal. And that was, that was, that like was my chase. It's like there's guidelines, rules. It's like that's what we that's what you stick yeah, exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that so that works for me. It's a structure. Yeah. Yeah. But but I think the PDA and the ADHD probably fire me up. But my ADHD is completely out of control. It's probably why I get lost. It's worse when I'm tired. And and like in the evenings now, like 
I can't watch it. I mean, it's always been like this, but I can't watch telly. Like, I try. I will watch a film five times because, like, or rewind it ten minutes because I've, I just drift off and I ain't got a clue. And it happens in conversations. It's ever so rude. And but in comment, and this is one. So this is this is something I worked out. But in commentary, I got a screen. I got headphones. If I if I lapse in commentary, even concentration, even for a second, then, like, there's a mistake. I will make a mistake. So I'm locked in, and yeah. and and it probably commentary is enough to feed my brain and make it almost calm. It's not searching. It's like it's got everything it needs right in front of, right in front of it, and yeah. and that. So that's probably why I loved commentary so much, or do love commentary so much. And that's also, you know, because I'm a bit shy, perhaps. Why presenting, hosting took a took me a lot, lot longer to become a good host. And I haven't done it for three months now, and I noticed it in Dakar that I'm not there yet. But I will be now. We're going not to hard line in. next. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't come like commentary. I can probably sit down and be really good straight away, like as good as I want to be. But mm. hosting. I feel a bit awkward. I worry about what you know. It's like on top of me a bit, yeah. But 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 in the evenings I can't do anything. But then the other day I put on Killers of the Flower Moon, and it was so insanely good and so interesting. Like with the history of all. Then you're oh in. Oh my god, I was in. I didn't blink an eye for three hours. I really? sat there and I loved it. You're so, a huge history guy as well, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah well, I've got low, I've had. My interests are insane, man. When I was a kid, I got into mountain biking because I'd ride around to archaeological sites to Chumali and right, you know, and all that shit. And then now I'm like obsessed, or I have been obsessed with palm tree growing. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm to be honest, it's a fun way, way to be. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Why not? I mean, it's all right. I don't care. If but you're I, interested, ah, go yeah. with it. <laughs> Mate, all, sorts. Yeah. It's, all the people I find interesting are interested in something. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Mm. Everyone I'm drawn to is like, but they're interested. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, that, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, and the only gnarly thing, well, the only negative thing for me really about it, the, 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 or the most negative thing about it is, because it's actually, I see it as quite a positive thing now, yeah. I've come through it, I would never have had this job if I didn't have autism, I'd never, so autism ruined me as a racer actually, because if a downhill wasn't absolutely perfect, like honestly, if there was four pedal strokes in it, I walked in, I was like, there's a flat bit, right, I'm done, I might as well not be here, I'd leave the start up, I'd have a, I'd have a battle in my brain, come on, go for it. There's only six more of these this year. Come on, just, just pedal that 100 yards. And I'd be like, come on, you're going to do it. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> no. And I'd just sit down and roll. And I used to roll out the start hut quite a lot. Like, I just, I was so anti. But then, when I got to a track like Nevergall or one where I knew I could score, the pressure's on, I have to deliver. I ain't going to be doing this anymore. What I love, traveling the world. So then you felt like you're mm. focused in, almost like the movie. Like you're, Then you're like... Maybe, yeah, maybe. And I then it's go, like a And I could go and get gift. a podium. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, like, yeah, maybe. And that was the same with the commentary. Like, I ain't getting there, but I absolutely love the work. And yeah. actually, as well, I'm an absolute pain in the ass to deal with behind the scenes. Thank you, Red Bull, for putting up with me. Like, I'm pretty sure that I'm not easy. I don't know. I stand my ground. I'm awkward. I'm difficult. But... But, but but once I'm there, I'm so happy and I love the structure and I've got so much to go at that I'm content and I work hard. Like yeah. I can work really hard for, I can work hard for hours and hours, no problem. I can go all night as long as I don't have to get up because that'll kill me. But I can work all night and I love it and that's fine with me. So mm. it works like therapeutic to me, you know, it's like, yeah. but, but, but I'd like in the evenings, that's the only gnarly bit is like, you're trying to watch telly or something and it's like my head's noisy. It's like it doesn't stop. It's like, <laughs> like there's never, there's never, my head's never peaceful ever, like ever from the minute I wake up. I woke up at half five this morning because I was coming here to do this and this is massive. Yeah. For me to come on here and say all this is like. It's appreciated, but, man. Well, I don't appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on here to say it. It's me. But I've had, it's been, like I say, it's been a weird six years. Everyone, a lot of people think I'm weird. No doubt I am in the way I go about and I want people to know why. I'm not actually weird. I just got autism. And I won't ever say I'm autistic. I'll always say I've got autism because okay. I, I, I like to think it's not my own personality. Or, you know, it's mm. my, sorry, it is my own personality. But like things I read afterwards, like in that initial period, it's like people who've got autism mask and they haven't got their own personality. They take pieces of others and people's others. And I was like, I don't even know, what, who am I then? But you know, what it the really killed rule? me. I don't understand oh, the rules. I, yeah. I don't know about mm. how much you can pinpoint. It's just a spectrum of being human in so many different ways, isn't isn't it? Mm. I don't understand yeah, how... Yeah, we're all different, mate. Ladies yeah, as well as it, the, the huge thing with this as well is obviously early in your life, there was no diagnosis for this stuff. You were no. just naughty kid. 
Yeah, yeah. you were just a naughty kid. Oh my god, I was a failure. All Whereas my now life. it's yeah, quite I am different. intelligent. I'm clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can commentate. You got to be of a good intelligence to be yeah. able to commentate like that. Yeah. Oh, it was not. It was. It's been. It's been wild. <laughs> really wild. And you know, I was at Crankworks, and then I was with Needles and Cam. You know, and at this point in time, I'm, well, I know Needles a long time. I didn't <clears> know Cam that well, but I know he's really nice. And and then we were walking down the track a couple of years ago, and they said, and then Needles goes. Elon Musk come out on the Saturday night show yesterday and said he's got Asperger's, right? And as a side note, I actually haven't got Asperger's. I'm pointed out. We'll have a look at that in a sec. I only looked at that last night for the first time. Yeah. I, yeah honestly, I did because I got the diagnosis. Like I said, I'd been upset. I worked it out myself. I need a diagnosis. I got it. I never read this because it would have probably upset me too much. Okay. But and and I said <coughs> and I and I just I just I didn't want to lie, so I was like, I've got that. And I remember Cam's face, he was like, you know, I was like, yeah. They didn't make anything of it. And then I've told other people, I told Red Bull, I told Chris at work, and I've told other people at Red Bull, and each time it felt a bit better. And then, and then, you know, and then to come on here now and to sort of, and then I told someone the other day, I was talking to people about podcasting, and I was like, I'd like to do one where I investigate autism because what the hell is it? And I started to go down that route actually last year with a big TV channel and then all the funding got stopped. So oh, really? I did a bit. Yeah, I got hung up on that as well. But like, you know, it's like, um, what was I saying? Uh, we were talking about you would, uh, wanted to investigate it at the TV channel. Yeah, investigate got- it on a TV <coughs> show. But sorry, no, every time I've told someone and these podcast people, and they said, he said, like, it was nothing to him. He said, it's like, wow. Yeah, it's normal now. And this morning I told yeah. Matt, I was texting Matt Jones, and I said to him, <coughs> I'm going on Ollie's podcast today to say I've got autism. And Davis. And, uh, yeah, sorry. Matt, excuse <laughs> me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. no, and, um, and, um, and he just texts back. Well, I don't think that would surprise anybody. <laughs> so it's good. To, and this is me now levelling up and drawing a line under it, mate. It's done. I'm done with it. I'm done with being stressed about it. I'm done with it. I, but it's good that everyone knows why I am what I am. I, the, probably the gnarliest thing perhaps for people to deal with me is, is that there's no... I have zero empathy. I okay. have zero, as you can tell, from them one-liners on Freecaster, probably. like They were out of control. Like, <laughs> yeah. You feel you've got zero empathy. I have no... Em- Would you say I've got no empathy? No. I, I don't even know what empathy is. It's sympathy, isn't it? Like, well, I mean... Feelings. Yeah, but I wouldn't say you've got zero you empathy. Must have got, you've got feelings. Yeah. Well, I think the so. The fact we're having this conversation now, means you have I feelings. I announced to the head of live at Red Bull, who's wicked, I was like, yeah, I've got no emotion. I've got no emotion. And she was like, no, no, I've heard you commentate. You've got emotion. Yeah, and dude. Yeah, got, like, yeah, you yeah. Can't, yeah. Well, When I you can't say you've got no... I my emotion. That's the thing of autism. I can't, which is why right. I, I like can't stop it. myself. Yeah, I can't stop myself crying. Mm. But obviously in commentary, it might be a good thing. Yeah, maybe. Because yeah. there's no hiding that. No, no, that no. is real. Yeah. And I think people probably feel that at home. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And Christ it's the same for these mighty. conversations. Yeah, Christ it's real. And, like and a lot of them commentaries, mate, a lot of I don't mind admitting, on them winning runs, I'd, I'd finish that winning run like I was on the bike with tears in my eyes. All the time, all the time. I used to have tears, not crying, but like I would be fucking emotional about someone winning a lot of the time. Mm. And actually, so would Cloud. Look at Claudio. Sometimes he'd had tears in I bark. Yeah. You know, Elliot, when Minar won in Val de Sole, insanely, you know, all these things. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a trip, man. It's weird. It's yeah. weird as. But I'm glad I already, honestly, God almighty, I woke up at 5am this morning stressed. I've been, this has consumed me. I don't think I was as good at the Dakar rally, probably because I was exhausted and tired from getting up. But also, I, I knew I was coming to do this. And this is the biggest thing I've ever done in my life right now, to say this in front of people. And it's much, much, much bigger to me than it is anyone listening but Christ, I just, yeah, I just need to get it out of my head. I need to draw a line under the World Cup. The film's out on Sunday, and that's why well, I'm making a part two in two weeks in Guatemala, but that's almost <laughs> it. That's almost Have you it. felt like it's been a load every time you've said some said it out loud? So it's taken a bit of the way. Yeah. Like, I don't want to sound like a cliche, but people say um, sharing and talking makes a difference. Yeah, it does. Really it does. does. Yeah, it really does. And it, I think if, if, there's a, if there's I won't a, cry again now. I'm all right with it now. No, but there's a the, the, they do say that right of like talking about stuff and especially with men's mental health. Mm. So he, and men mask, they cover things up. They don't want to show emotion. No, the fact you've sat and had this conversation and showing emotion. I'm gonna walk is out a here, massive thing. Like feeling better huge. than I felt probably in 100%. six years. Hopefully, I really I, hope no, so. I will. I feel calm already. Yeah, look at this then. So this is that report. Go on, I'll keep going. What's changed then? You've got this. You didn't even want to look at it, and you were gutted because I've leveled but, up. But, but now you now, now you think about. You accept all of these these uh, diagnoses. 
I don't even know how you yeah, say it. Yeah. Now you accept them, and that now obviously it's not. You don't have the same feeling now. You're like, you don't have the same feeling about it, do you? No, do you because know what I've I mean? gone because I've put myself through it to come on here. Because yeah. I've told people, and every time I told someone, it felt better. So logically, to me, I was like, "We'll tell everyone, and it's done. That's why I'm here. That's it." But look at this. Like, I hadn't. I honestly had never looked at this, and I won't bore you with it all. One. No, I'm I, well interested. In this I swear thing. to God, I hadn't read it before last night because I didn't want to. I didn't really care. I mm. just knew I had autism. But like one bit, it says doesn't suffer with um, like a lot of people who have autism very monotone. But it said I've got normal speech, except it's incredibly loud. And he doesn't seem to notice that. And even louder when he talks about bicycles or <laughs> racing. So I was like, yeah, get you might, I've got a quick question. Sorry. Hmm? How do you go about getting this? So if you want to go and get... So this is... So and I do feel quite strongly about this. There ain't nothing done for autistic people. Yep. The NHS sucks. Like I think it would take me three or four years to get a diagnosis via them if you can even get one. They don't care. And I can sort of see why. Because is it medical or is it not? I don't know. But mm. but you know what I mean? I don't know. But like, so I just paid two and a half grand, walked in and got one there and then. And that was, I needed, I just needed to, it was And what is it? What's the, what's the process look like? Oh man, you is go in a, a room. Day they, of chat, like... they go in the room and they chat to you. Yeah. And, and you have to do these tests and stuff, right? But why, and I, I nailed all these tests actually. <laughs> um, but while they're doing that, she's watching you. So like, so, so this, everything. this is thing. Yeah, it's not about the yeah, test. Yeah, yeah. So language and communications. The difficult you experience, for example, with initiating sustaining communication, understanding sarcasm idioms are cru uh, are above the crucial kit often consistent with autistic spectrum condition, which is nice. They use the word condition. That's what it's getting changed to. It's not a disorder. Okay. Up yours. Some of the cleverest people on earth have had autism. Yeah. Like, definitely. And, and that, so the threshold to say you have autism is four. That might, be, yeah, and I've, my score's 12. So I'm three times on that. And what I was going to say, and this might upset me, is that, so Asperger's is going, right? Forget it. And don't ever use it. Because Hans Asperger put thousands of autistic kids to death mm. in the Second World War. Because, I don't know really, whether he was, like, the Nazis got involved in all that shit. And whether he had to do it to survive himself. But he only really worked with boys, not girls, because he thought they'd have a better value to the Nazis. But the fact is, is that... I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, so you won't ever that. hear me say that. But there's no argument. His station or whatever it was, I can't remember the name of it, in Germany, he fucking put thousands of kids out in the cold and let them perish and die. And that hits me pretty hard. Yeah. Um, social relatedness. Your difficulties with recognising facial cues, recognising and regulating emotions, and forming and maintaining social relationship are way above it. The threshold's 31. My social relatedness score was 80. So nearly three times that. Sensory and motor. And this is probably um, like the dyspraxia thing. So I'm clumsy. So I walked in a production room like a couple of years ago and it was all people I didn't know. And that's the worst thing. Like saying hello to people. Like the saying goodbye to the Dakar crew. Oh my God, I was dreading it. The people hugging and like, see, it's been amazing. I'm like, you stood wanna. back. Fucking then I just go in with the knucks, snucking the women. You know, they're all hugging. I'm like, no, nah, <laughs> no, nah, I don't want to hug anyone. It's weird as, man. Don't touch me. But that, that, that dyspraxia is a thing. But yeah, I went in a production room and I, I literally saw my chair and then there was people everywhere and I spun around. And I was like, hello, 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 hello. And it's too much. It's too much. My head's going. I'm like, I don't really, you know, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm yeah. dealing with a social situation. I sat down and missed the chair, man. Like, and that's in front of all the bosses. That's in front of all these people for Sunset and Vine. I sat, you know, pushed straight on my ass on the floor. And everyone is looking at me like, is he drunk? What the fuck is going on here? Yeah. So this is why i got to say it. Mm. But the, So that, threshold 16, I'm 29. Um, circumscribed interests, threshold's 15. I'm only 18 on that. But what my does that mean? Your need for structure and routine and the nature and intensity of your circumscribed interest are above the clinical cutoff and consistent with ASC. And then the total RAD score here, which is like the total autistic score, the threshold is 65 and I ranked 139. So I've like got, a, I'm riddled with it. I got like a double dose or double something. Dose. I don't know but what that means. But yeah, I'm pretty, I'm up there really, I think. You know, I'm flat yeah. chat with it. Yeah. So... You know, and obviously when I got upset with it and I looked back on my career and everything, like my mountain bike career, I did feel a bit robbed. 
like because I thought I knew I knew I had skills to be a lot better. I couldn't train because that was probably dyspraxia. That it's like a heaviness of the joints. Like I used to get off and walk up hills, even on bike rides with a team, because I just felt heavier. I didn't want to do it, but yeah. but yeah, I don't know. But there's so it all fell in place. But now looking back, honestly, I did bloody well to get to the start line. That's a, it's that's true. And yeah. getting pissed the night before and getting pissed all week, yeah, because I felt so unhappy, so awkward to be there. I needed that. Yeah. And honestly, working for Red Bull has been the best thing because I don't do that anymore. I don't drink. I don't do anything. You know, it's like, so that's what, that's what's dragged me. It's really been life changing for me. Mm. Mate, it's, there's so much more here. Like, you know, obviously talking about not doing the commentary and stuff, but you can see now the, the whole, the p- whole picture of this, the whole story of what it meant to you. And obviously all of that taken yeah. away. Mate, I can, and I ain't really it's, over it completely. No, I, I think it's going to be really it, hard to. So it is like, you know, it's probably hard, easier to sort of um, compare it to like losing a family, isn't it? And it you know, yeah, grief. That's it, honestly, yeah, yeah it's like it, grief. honestly, yeah. exactly what it felt like. Yeah. Like, it, that's, I think that's what it was. Yeah, I don't even, I can't explain it. No. I still can't explain it. But when I put the autism in it, a bit I can because like the change and things like that. I don't know. Mm. It was an obsession. It was a massive change in my life. I've been on that tour for thirty years, but poor. Yeah, man. Yeah, beat me up. It we was, it ended me for a bit. I didn't. I didn't function for quite a while there. For months yeah. and months and months. I just. I didn't get up out of bed in the morning, man. I just lay there, dead. I was done. I mm. was done. I had no interest in getting up. I didn't have no interest in putting telly on. I just lay there. I was. Yeah, it was bad. I mean, for me, it was really bad. I'm a life liver, man. I fucking live my life. Wore my body out riding bikes. Yeah. You know, I'm knackered. But yeah, that's how it is. Weird, weird. Very mm. hard to explain. And thank God today I've drawn a line under it a bit. Yeah. Honestly, this is great. This Speaking is of lines under it, the film. Hey? We kind of started talking about the film and I don't think we've actually spoke about the film. Let's get back yeah, to we've the... Yeah, God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I went off on a bit of a tangent there. Pretty typical of what I might do with the OASD. It's true. Oh, actually, just to quickly with that, does that oh, also, this diagnosis, you've paid your money, you've gone in, they've got the diagnosis. Does that then also go through all of the other things we've talked about? PDA? No, I went to see someone else a bit then. So, yeah. yeah, I did a bit of further investigations, okay. really. Yeah, I got into it for a bit there. And then, like I said, I, this woman said, oh, you need to take this. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, go to the doctor and get this. And I was like, and this was the second time. And I was like, but I function completely normally. I'm, I've, this is, uh, mm. I get in trouble with the police. Yeah. I work within the <laughs> realms of reality. Maybe only just, mm. and I am edgy, like... There's certain things with it, like I have absolutely, I don't give a shit about the consequence of anything, really. And that's a fact with it as well. Like, which is why I was risky in commentary. And I still am. But but Red Bull's like reined all that in, man. You ain't going to be there if you're unprofessional. They ain't putting up with that. Yeah. So it's really taught me. It's definitely made me a better person in life. It has. It, much better. Yeah. Because I know that I'll be gone if I don't. Yeah. So, you know, and I love it. I love it. I'm. It's mad. I worked in a car factory, mate, putting... Yes. Fucking wiring harness is in, and now I'm like famous for being a commentator for Red Bull. It's like unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I was at the Dakar two days ago, this close to Carlos Sainz <laughs> Senior. It's yeah. insane for me. It's brilliant. Yeah. So I ain't going to cock that up. No. That's right. No. And that and that's dragged me through a lot of it. Thank God I've had a career now that I'm proud of because I didn't have. I'd have died pretty unhappy, really, going, mm. well, you're a pretty <clears throat> shit bike racer, and then you didn't really do anything else. This is it. I'm, I'm, I live for it. I love it. It's cool. So good. Yeah, it is good, isn't it? Yeah. Well, good. Um, so, yeah, we started to talk about the film. So, what? why did the film come around? Like, why is this film so important Well, to you? It, yeah, I suppose it is really important to me. I don't know, really. I was in... A lot of things fell in place. So I went, I went, I was going to do it in Japan. Then the last minute I moved to Mexico because <laughs> I knew some people there. that Because I went there with Hans Ray the year before. So I'd wreckied it a bit. And, I, and then, you know, I love this bloke Mao. And so I went down there to see him. And, and I turned up on the, I was in Mont St. Anne on the first day. And the cameraman I was going to take who did all my dirty business. And like, obviously everyone was a bit beat at Red Bull. And a lot of people lost work. And it was cool. I wanted to take him. And then he couldn't come because of personal reasons, sadly. So then Boombox stepped in and got me this bloke called Nick Van Burkle. And I'd never met him or spoke to him. It was like Sunday and he's flying down the next day to Mexico and we get there. And I'm like, look, mate, I ain't got any idea. I've only got, there's nothing written down. It's all in my head here. 
I was like, I brought this coffee sack from the UK with Mexico written on it and a wig and we're going to start the film like this. <laughs> and then, and, and then, you know, it turned out actually to me, he's an absolute genius and he brought all my ideas to life and we worked through it in the week and that's how the film comes. And I don't want to say too much about the no, film. No, Is this stuff good for you though? Mm. Like as far as like creativity and like... I love it, being, I love making films. It's yeah. my favourite thing to do. I've sort of, because I have to direct a bit and... My, write the script it's my concept yeah I love it it's yeah. amazing to make a film um, and it, you know it, yeah it's like well we did one in Scotland didn't we Doug and that did well it was great fun yeah. wasn't it but I was pretty depressed at the time and actually well you know I was quite tricky in the edit wasn't I but I thought I thought that I don't know I felt like I was I didn't really probably know what I don't know I don't know but like I was I was I, I I didn't realise that film was as good as it was because of the state of mind I was in. That was a long time before I'd gotten to Fort William and everything. So right. people like it and it's good. I love that. Yeah. But this one, I ain't going to say too much about it, but I do live out a lifetime ambition in it. I get to commentate on myself. <laughs> 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 which, is, which is so weird but quite funny so yeah yeah but the film I, let's see it's going out on Sunday yeah I'm calling it right what what YouTube channel mine nice my dude. YouTube yeah. this Sunday and what time are we saying because we're going to meet what do we there. do 6 we're going to meet in the chat aren't we yeah, yeah. Have a chat? Let's get, yeah let's get anyone yeah. who's listening to this get in the chat yeah that'd be yeah, good we'll get in the chat. Yeah, let's go 6.15pm Sunday that's when it's going GMT. out GMT GMT yeah you're right yeah and uh, I, I don't know but <laughs> yeah, like it's. I sent it to Giant actually. Obviously, <clears throat> paid for it, and obviously, you know, riding for them this year has been amazing as well. And they give me an opportunity to make these films, so which is incredible. Um, but they said it's like the most personal thing they've ever seen. And I don't know if you've just seen it. Would you? Is it? I don't really know. I didn't think of it being that personal. Personal. I see it as being it's personal hilarious. in the way that it's huh? <laughs> funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd say it's, it's personal in the way that it shows your personality to me is what I'd say. It's, but that it's type making of light of what I went through, actually. Yeah, is what that it is. is true. And that's that the only true. way to come out of it, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, certainly. And, and if you just listen to this, then probably you would actually, you know, it probably is more personal, actually. Yeah. I think oh, given, yeah, this given the conversation. Lets you know the background of it. Yeah, now. well, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah given yeah, the conversation no. we've just had now, oh, yeah. makes that. Oh, no, so much better. It's driven by. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it was, was good already. But it's yeah, like. Yeah, but it is driven by emotion. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It was a really. It's all in there, isn't it? In, in, it's not all in there, but it's all in, but it's there. in there. It's sort of. I don't know. I didn't know. Yeah. I just hope people find it like I it. I mean, I don't care it. if they don't really. <laughs> as long as you feel better about <laughs> it, well, yeah. like. it's right. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed making it, and, and it, you know, I think it'll be all right. Yeah, it, it's sure. different. It's very different, isn't it? It's yeah. a bit different. Well, it's well good. I'd like to know like what else is going on with Rob Warren at the moment. Like what what we're we working on. But should we do that after this ad break though? You want to have an ad break? Yeah, we're doing an ad break. It's an ad break. Ad break. Bing bong! This is an InvisiFrame public service announcement. That's right, we've just joined the InvisiFrame team and we're here to tell you about some of the benefits. The InvisiFrame paint protection film is non-yellowing. It's also self-healing. For light scratches, they just disappear. Oh, right. InvisiFrame is stain resistant and will protect your bike from knocks and scratches. Each kit fits millimetre perfect and there's over 40,000 to choose from. And in the unlikely event your bike isn't one of those 40,000, then one of the universal kits will have you covered. And when it comes to selling your bike, you can peel off the Invisi frame. Underneath, your vessel will be absolutely mint, guaranteeing you the maximum resale value. Cha -ching. You ride it, we protect it. <laughs> <laughs> And that's not all. For the first two weeks, they are also giving TRC listeners 15% off across the web store. All you need is the code, the Ride Companion, all in lowercase. Remember, they ship globally and all prices include import duties, so you don't have to worry about any nasty surprises. That's a discount off everything, including PPF kits, decals, bike wash, and their new protective coating. Listening to this after two weeks... Don't worry, we still have you covered and the code will continue to work and offer you 10% off site-wide. Thanks, InvisiFrame. I wasn't actually trying to put... Because I feel like a cock. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say each of these individual things are 
Like, do they need to have all? Do you, how how detailed should you go into it? Well, how how should you? How much should you actually find out about yourself? Uh, ah, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, no, you're like right. I, I no, you're right. What for me? I don't know what for me would be helpful. No, I because- wouldn't have done ever if it hadn't kind of been highlighted to me in a way. But then I started down that path, and I did need to know. Yeah. And now it's become really interesting to me, actually, a bit like. Neurodiversity. Well, I hope in a right. good way. I hope in a good way because yeah, now it, because it, is, you it wasn't. Think, like you were saying when, when when you say disorder, it's it's fucking shit, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Who named it that? Yeah. But you don't want to. No one wants. Ev- no one wants to have a disorder. In right? many ways, it's an advantage. Yeah. I, I couldn't commentate like that if I didn't have autism. I don't think because I would never put. Mate, like you in- said, look how many smart people have it. Yeah, well, that's right. It's like that. Like bit. it's, it's for t- some people, it's a cheat code. Like my my partner's um, sister's got autism, like Has quite she? heavily autistic. Yeah, but like, it, obviously, she's just struggling in a lot of situations. But you ask her a football score from two years ago. Well, yeah, you go. It's like okay. honestly, the stats quite from cool. World Cups are soothing. But I, it's hard to explain. Yeah. I love them. I'm like. <laughs> It's like relaxing to me to find that shit out. It's, yeah. You know, it was true. Yeah, it was. Yeah. You know. I, like, I like that that's like a comfort blanket for you. That's really cool. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. But it is. And then to go and deliver it. Yeah. But that took a lot of work. That I took bet. a lot of work to get good at that. But yeah, yeah it's interesting. Ultimately, you've got to live your life. You are what you are. All this labels don't matter, like you said. It don't matter. Like, I'd never known I'd have carried on as I was blind forever. But I do know now. And it, and it actually... And now I've come to terms with it. And honestly, this today... After today... I don't know if I'll ever mention it again, mm. right? Because I'm not... You don't need to, No, do and I'm not, I'm not going for any more assessments and shit. I'm <coughs> getting on my life again. I'm over it. Yeah. But like, but this is drawing a line under it. And yeah, I'm quirky and odd. Yeah, you know why now? Yeah, I'm difficult. I'm really difficult for Red Bull sometimes. I know I am. But like, they put up with me, which yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, I don't fit many places. And I never have. Mm. But I do fit there, it seems. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, funny, isn't it? Hey? It is, mate. It's a funny old world. Funny old world, isn't We're it? We're all different. We're all very different. <laughs> Aren't we? <laughs> and that's why we don't all get on. And that's why there's wars and all that shit. That's yeah, it's true. true. It's quite true. Yeah, for mm. sure. No, it's funny, isn't it? So what is next? What's going on with Rob Warner? I've got some serious travel coming up. I heard. I'm going to Guatemala <laughs> next <laughs> week to shoot part two of this. Yep. I might have to get a bit of clearance on that. <laughs> <laughs> See how this one goes down. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Um, and then I'm home a week or two, and then I go to Tasmania for Hardline. On the way back of that, I go to Chile, to Santiago, and then off to do uh, to do the first Cerro Abajo, Red Bull Cerro Abajo downhill race. Then I come home, and I think I'm home. I think I'm home two weeks, and I go to New Zealand for Crankworks. Yep. And on the way back from that, I believe it's it's um, I think it's Mexico where you're going to be Guanajuato. I think so. After New Zealand, then yeah. So you're doing the. Oh mate, I can't wait. No, we're gonna have a right time. We're gonna have a right time yeah. there, and then own. And then I think I don't know. Then there's the Crankworks Australia and Whistler, and yeah. I'll be busy. Then I, you know, and I get to do some motorbike stuff. Like I did Erzberg last year. So did the good. Getzen Rodeo, and I've never felt more alive again. Actually, since losing the World Cup, than at those two, because the mountain biking, it's different now. I've been for a fair bit with it. I'm coming back, but like. You know, it's just been hard because everyone's like, yeah. it's overwhelming. In Snowshoe last year, like, and, it, and it's always had a, it's always had a negative effect. Even in Snowshoe last year, like the whole queue started shooting, bring back water, bring, you know, and it's like that everywhere I go at a World Cup race. It's like bonkers. Yeah. So, and, and, and actually it had a very negative effect on me. I suppose I felt like I was letting everyone down and all that. I don't know. Mm. But now, and all the comments the other day, I put up this like crap thing I put like made up about myself, like, you know, losing it and been a rock bottom and all this. And the f- comments really? were unbelievable. And, and a year ago or six months ago, even three months ago, I don't know, but no, maybe not six months ago, they would have made me, they would have like made me sad and made me cry again. But now it's like a brilliant thing. And I'm like, yeah, come on, everybody. Fuck yeah, we're going. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm nearly back. I'm on the way back. I'm definitely getting there again. But it's been, so the whole last six years has just been weird. That's for sure. It yeah. was like, found out I had that. Then there was the whole... It's a long time too, man. Oh my God, like mate. I, I can't I mean, explain don't get me just wrong. say like six months. But don't it's get like me wrong, it, was, it wasn't all down either. No. Don't get me wrong. No, 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 no. But I came to terms with that. It was COVID, which basically was a shit time. Yeah. Started off brilliant, didn't it? We were all like... <laughs> 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 yeah, like, and then it was like... <laughs> it was a bit sad. Yeah. Went on a bit. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then, you know, and then losing the World Cup. But losing the World Cup 
was was far worse than anything else. Mm. Uh, you know, and still a bit of a mystery to me. But I wasn't the only one who went through it. No. A whole of, I think a lot of Red Bull went through it, man. It was like it was a big thing for us. It was mm. an amazing production to be a part of. An amazing thing to do to drag a sport from nothing back to the Gideonites of like a high end. Which is what Downhill deserves. Yeah. It deserves it. It's the Formula One of mountain biking. Hey, actually, whilst we're talking about this, right? Because I hear a lot of mountain bike races when you're talking about your schedule. That's a that's a lot of mountain bike races you're doing with Red Bull. Yeah. It's not like you're not doing mountain bike races. No, no, no. It's absolutely what I so do. So we've just got one organisation, the U- UCI, and they they do an, another mountain bike race, and it's the same discipline. Even they've just introduced <laughs> world go. champs. Snow, I believe it's snow downhill and snow super G. I just saw that. So who, <laughs> who of yeah. them? Who are, what? Who signed this up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, who did they see riding down a ski slope and they thought this is a sport? I don't know what it is. I think I know where it's come from, and I, this isn't anything I've official or anything like. I'm, right, I'm not in with the UCI. What are your thoughts on it? First of all, let's see what it looks like. Right, so you're open to it. No, you're open well, to bombing not down really. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, if it's as fast as ski racing, I like. I don't mind downhill skiing, but it ain't downhill, is it? But I don't know. Let's see. I don't know. But Mate, like, but what I think is happening is that I think the summer games, the Olympics, are stuffed, and I think this might be what they're trying to do is to get downhill in. You no, know, the village is full, right? They yeah. can't. They can't fit any more athletes in. This, this is only what I know. This might right. be incorrect. So they can't get downhill athletes in without getting rid of a, a, a cycling discipline. It's mi- maxed out. And obviously okay. there might be space in the Winter Olympic Village from what I gather. Something like that, I think. And they might uh, be going... think? Maybe basketball, yeah, football, that, football could But go. how untrue is that? Mm. How untrue is that to downhill? That ain't downhill. If, if there's an Olympic discipline of downhill, it needs to be what's been happening since 1991 when we had the first World Championships. Not... Some new. This is not right. This is not downhill. It so definitely respect, needs to be something that people do. Doesn't yeah, it? That's you know right. what I mean. Like well, that's it, insane to me. I'll oh, t- let's chuck them down the slope. Go to Kitsville next week. Do a bit of skiing. No, let's take the bikes. <laughs> 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 it's insane, <laughs> man. <laughs> what are they going to do? Scuba racing. <laughs> we all got snorkels and pedal <laughs> through it's the sea. Pretty bizarre, isn't you it? know what I mean? What is it? What is it about? <laughs> I've always pedal through the sea. Dude, I've, n- I've never <laughs> understood it in the Olympics, <laughs> even right. So good. Right, track cycling. Yeah. What's the participation numbers on track cycling? What we what are we talking? Why oh, are there so many disciplines in track cycling? I've got to say, and I'm not wishing. For mountain biking to be in the Olympics, but what are we even representing? If you're putting loads of people going around in circles, no one fucking does. Hey, it. I don't want downhill going mm. in the Olympics. No, I no. I don't. But then because you'll end up in this weird four year cycle. What and about can... snow downhill? I think that's probably a worse idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, I do, but like you know, you're going to get in this weird cycle where probably the year before an Olympics, like they'll have to qualify, I guess, like the cross country riders. But as soon as they get the points, no one's going to risk injury. Yeah. And then that year right. up to it, no one's going to race until they race at the Olympics because they've got to be there. Get strangled, yeah. doesn't it, the sport? Mm, what do you get? Opinion. Four people from each country and, right. and the rest yeah, just... And, it, and honestly, mm. it's, it's, sometimes I feel like it's not a fair representation either because like you say, like small countries don't get to get send yeah. both their good riders. And, and especially in downhill where anyone in theory can win with a run, yeah. one run format. Like anyone who's pretty good should have that opportunity <coughs> and they almost definitely won't. So... Let's keep down and out of the Olympics, in my opinion. I, it's good as it, it was good as it was. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any, uh, like, obviously you still must keep a really close eye on the sport. Less so, because it's quite difficult for me to follow it. Is it? I, yeah, I don't like... Okay, I was going to say team I moves try and this follow year, the results. No, I know a bit about that. Yeah. You can ask me about that. I keep an eye on it. Of course I do. Not, I don't follow the racing as easily, as much as I would like. Yeah. But it feels that, like it's been a... Double whammy for Daniel, obviously, with the changes with the broadcast. But oh, we've gone through that. But then also, like, the pandemic impact now of riders not having teams. I just feel like, unfortunately, we're in a bit of a... Oh, it's a bad time. a bit of a mess, isn't it? The like, industry's in a mess, isn't it? Yeah, for it's sure. bad, bad... Like bad we said, time. we were talking, obviously, about, like, Danny not even having a ride. Like well, that's what it sounds like, right? At the moment. At the moment. As of recording uh, this, there's nothing yeah, reported. Yeah, so someone like, said. I don't know. But, yeah. It's so weird and different yeah out there at the it's really it feels bad like yeah it's a really bad situation but yeah. let's see what happens i mean phew, yeah it's a good sport <laughs> you know what i mean but but yeah, but in all sport. honesty it's a great sport it is it's and a made for tv sport yeah yeah which brings me on to something i want to ask you about and that we've already said you're going to mexico sarah bio what are your which is the urban downhill racing 
I think is so exciting. Oh, Obviously, yeah. I've got a bit of a horse in the race, but like, I really love it. I love the racing and I love it. It's become its own thing. Yeah, I love it. And I said to Red Bull, I love it because it's it's like absolutely authentic. Yeah. Like it's a real thing. You know, there ain't no fake ass about it. These are South American riders that don't really get to perform in Europe and they go to these street races, which is their bread and butter. This, like to them, it's downhill. Yeah. This is what they do. They yeah. ride concrete stairs. They practice. This is what they do. I mean, they do other stuff too, but they it's a speciality down there. And I love commentating on it because... They will risk their lives to win it. They will. They really will take some risks. Like they, <laughs> and it's they shocking. punch it out. Yeah, it's madness. <laughs> like it's concrete stairs madness. As fast yeah. as you can go with a ra- handrail. That oh, you so saw Bernard's crash. Like was it last year or the year before? It, yeah, yeah. You before. know, it's gnarly, mate. And the South Americans are the best at it. Juan Favelas or Munoz, depending on what name he's going under, and Camilo Sanchez are like, you know, they're extraordinary bike riders and Vela's had a good ride didn't he in Leger last year or something he's he injured did, yeah. unfortunately the series oh, really? champion I don't think he'll be at round one but okay. he one broke his hand at Manzales downhill right I think it was his hand he's okay. unbelievable in practice a lot a lot of you well, see so this is a mad thing I've never seen a mate, street I, downhill in the flesh I until this year I cannot really? wait no. I cannot wait to be in Mexico watching it with you because it's un it's unreal how much it unravels during practice because practice is so limited. <laughs> yeah, they get like three runs. The track's Mate, built in the morning. Yeah, it? <laughs> it's so limited and like they have to tick off all of these features and stuff and they're, they're really key features, you know. Otherwise, you've got stairs in between, you've got streets. It's not like a World Cup track where, yeah, you've got features, but it's about the whole track, isn't it? Mm. Like the practice is really telling to me and you watch one for come down first run and you're like oh whoa <laughs> like he's cooking first run yeah, and it's he's like desperate to win it yeah his life he's putting his life on the line to win it that's how i see it yeah well he is he, he absolutely is he's, he's going out to the world he don't care yeah no. this is it this is their moment and they're gonna take it and they do yeah, take they it. do <laughs> take it oh, yeah that's mate. right the passion is insane yeah it's brilliant yeah that's right and that's you know that's 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 like working with red bull's amazing because they get to do that and they and, and and I like it because they 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 put on these like events that probably no one else would take a chance on like ad lines pretty wild and rampage yeah. is wild you know it's cool I love being a part of all that yeah I yeah love yeah it. I do it's brilliant it's I'm brilliant. really looking forward to the hard line the Taz one oh yeah because it's like early as well like we're just into the new year yeah. and there's a race like there's something to sink your teeth into I and then, then we're straight the into crank I really as well. know much about the track I yeah. haven't I've seen. Various little bits. But BK out there, there now? No, not yet. BK's going down at a test of jumps, yeah. I've heard. Yeah, he's yeah. going out there. Maybe he is there now. Or maybe next Won't week. Won't be long. Yeah. Won't be long. I mean, the ride, the lineup for it's insane as well. Like, a few yeah. big names have dropped because the teams have pulled them a little bit, which is oh, really? a bit disappointing. But okay. As in teams have pulled them from doing it? Yeah, because it's high risk, I suppose. Yeah, well, absolutely, which it is, yeah. Which it is, and they've got a World Cup season coming up, which is still, at the moment, more important. But that might change. Mm. It might change, eh? Might. I mean, it's hard to imagine these standalone events. Arguably, could be if we're struggling, could be a big part of the future of this. Yeah, if the you sport. could do, I think maybe. so. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna spread out, open out a little bit. I don't know, but that's how it feels, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly, in terms of what, what piques your interest, anyway. I think what, well, what as a viewer, yeah, I'm not interested in like, sort of slagging anything off, really, because I've got no reason to. Mm. But like. Just as a super fan, it's very easy to get excited about Hardline. Yeah, it it's is. very easy to get excited it's about the Sarah concept, Bios. Isn't it? Like, like all of these sort of like individual things, and it's the build up and yeah. it's the the hype. It's all the things that I love about yeah. World Cup yeah, racing. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like it, for some reason, it seems magnified at these events. Hey, and there's going to be a new track in Wales. I ain't going to say much about it. But okay. It, oh my god. Well. If that happens in foam. That's all I need to say. But it's going to wow. be, I think it's going to be a really, really spectacular change they've done there this year. So sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's so there's loads a lot of to be excited now. about. Red Bull so are coming back. I'm about. coming back. It's all Rob good, Warner's mate. Back. I'm back. I am back. I am back. I'm there. I know I had some tears today, but that's all right. I don't care now. Honestly, it doesn't matter. But like, um, yeah, it's all coming back round. It's good. Pfft. Is what, there anything? What a journey, man. What a trip, eh? Is there anything we've not talked about that you wanted to discuss? I think we've done it all, haven't we? I can't think of much else I can say in there. <laughs> Everyone knows I've got autism, ADHD, like a mofo. I've got fucking PDA. They're trying to change that to, I told you, didn't I? Um, something, what is it? 
Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, yeah, you did say yeah, before. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. Anyway. You know, like, obviously, you've had... Uh, sorry to go back over it. You've had the diagnosis. You've got all this knowledge. Do you feel a responsibility to do more with it? Or are you happy just to hmm. say that's, question, that's it? Yeah. That is a good question. I tell you what I'd love to do. I'd love to I'd, I'd love to find out about it and do it in a show, a podcast nice. or something like speak to people because I so I, I I'm not hung up on it now actually. That's gone. Mm. But I am interested like why is my brain wired up different to yours and how is it different to yours or a neurotypical person? Like why what like why why don't I like change? Why do I like routine? Why do I like numbers? <laughs> like, you know, yeah. why do I find things that are completely strange, unbelievably interesting? Like, and I do, I have fascination with the most strange things. Honestly, I, the other night, I literally sat and read about volcanoes for three hours again. You know, and I can't get over them. They're incredible. They're I incredible. love them. Love a volcano. The arsehole of the world. A bit, yeah. Slightly like is pumping out gas. Yeah, I'm going to go and see one in Guatemala. Sick. I'm going to go and see Mate, you. I, yeah, we've, I need to talk to you about volcanoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been up one. <laughs> oh, mate, yeah, and we could go back. Have I'd you been up love... Cotopaxi? Yeah, I've been up that. <laughs> oh, Cotopaxi, man. But it was, yeah, I've been up that. But I went up, Um, this is, yeah, this is probably better that we talk about it. Stromboli. <laughs> What's that one? We, we Let's go. Mate, is that I'm, the one you got arrested? I'm, yeah, I'm so up for going Where's there that, with Italy? you. Mate, it was insane. In it, Italy? Uh, Sicily, yeah. Sicily, is it a frother? Mate, it's a blow up bass note every three seconds. Sit right next to it, the floor's hot. It is the the coolest can we go? thing. Yeah, please, let's can go. we go? Oh, I'd love yeah. to go. I've drive. already got a let's go. court case and 5,000 euros. <laughs> <laughs> you got a free pass, I think. Well, I, don't do really I feel like if there's someone who doesn't care about that, it's probably you. Oh, I'm up for it. Five's cheap for sitting on a volcano room. Right, damn right. Yeah. Nah, things like that are real, real cool, isn't they? Yeah. And, you know, it's been annoying, actually, the last few years because I love living my life, man. I do. Like, I, you know, I really... Try I well just because of the ADHD probably, but I live every I do live my, like a lot of days. I pack a lot in. Let's say it that way, you know. So yeah. to be like not like that and suppressed and miserable doesn't really come my way. Doesn't suit you? That no. doesn't suit me. And I, I'm not depressive. I'm not. I never have been. And it, and 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 yeah. And it, yeah. The last I, years have absolutely spanked me they did that yeah it did but anyway I'm I think it's super interesting that you can learn so much about yourself now yeah, like yeah, with yeah, the power yeah, of the yeah. internet and stuff right and like you got this meat suit that you walk around in and this thing in your head this brain and like now you can actually take a deep dive if you want to learn more about it like okay well, how am I this way it's yeah. actually super interesting yeah, it's like super how you're interested in volcanoes right. and stuff it's like I learn about it I'm a brain it. surgeon but my god it's, yes. this is in here this is me it's you so I might as well find out a bit about it if I can I and I'm not hung up on it anymore and I'm definitely more focused now on getting back to work being really good at what I do and putting everything into that and I will mm. I, I will absolutely do that and I I struggle really struggle to not do it to the best of my ability and there's certain things that can affect that you know but mm. like like let me go to work put Elliot next to me put Tracy next to me and let's smash some commentaries you know what I mean like yeah. let's do it because because yeah. yeah it's it's an amazing do you know what when I did them World Cups every race was a privilege and every race was I saw it that I had to match like you're talking about Nino Scherter this incredible athlete or Bruni, you know, or any of them, Minar. And, and the commentary absolutely has to respect the work they've put in. And I needed to match that with a commentary, right? And that's how I did it, really. Like, yeah. you know, I loved commentating cross-country. It was amazing. Not always, but on a good race, oh, my God, it's really hard to beat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah you've got to respect it. You've got, you've got to run it. And, and, that's, and that's been... Probably a little trickier. Last year, I think I was over emotional in a lot of commentaries. Perhaps like this year, hopefully, it'll be a little bit calmer, a little bit. I don't know. It is mm. what it is. I'm pretty emotional when I commentate because yeah. I got no control over it whatsoever. Apparently, so yeah, all good. Let's go. Let's okay. go. Amazing. <sighs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you. I feel Big better. thanks. Doug. Thank you for everything. No, no, no. Honestly, yeah. the thank you is you to you two for getting me in and let me yeah, do this. Pleasure. And it's been. I wouldn't have done it with anyone else. I couldn't have done a podcast over the last year because I'd have blown the world up and wouldn't have a job. I'm proud of me <laughs> now. I'm proud of myself. For, like yeah, actually, I've been like I've come through it, and I can. It's good. It's all out there. 
Yeah. That was fucking massive for me today. And really feel, proud of you, man. I am, yeah, I'm emotional to get it proud out. Proud of you. Thank well, you for I'm everything, obviously. honestly. Nice Thanks for everything well you've done. done. No, I don't Everything you continue work, to do. It was just, it's, uh, it's just brilliant. I'm going to go pleasure. home now and just be happy and smile. and Because it's done. Fuck and yeah. when this comes out, you know, everyone, I am who I am and this is it. And it, live your life, be who you are. Don't give a shit. Just run it. That's how it is. Mate, make Wicked. me tear up. Let's, yeah. Let's wrap this. Where's that whiskey, motherfucker? That was a good one. What an episode. You did really well, though. <laughs> oh, thanks, dude. Yeah. Do you know what? I'll finish it off. What? If you could put some sort of link over my face. Yeah, I can do that. I could put a right? video up on Ollie's face of an episode we think you'll love. Is it on now? There is a subscribe button here on this chair. And on my face, another video we think you'll love. Thank you. We appreciate you. There's nothing in the chair now. Subscribe. <laughs>